customers sometimes take a while to reply. You can automatically follow up with unresponsive customers to let them know you're still looking forward to helping them. This workflow is often called Bump Bump Solve. It helps clean up outdated or inactive tickets in your account. We'll dive deeper into the step-by-step -step process in a moment, but first, here's what you'll be creating today. The first reminder will be sent after four calendar days of inactivity. If the customer remains inactive two days later, a second reminder will be sent. After one more day of inactivity, the ticket will be automatically solved and the customer will be notified. If the requester responds, you'll want to abort the bump bump solve automation so that your agents can continue working the ticket. To do this, you will create a trigger to set the ticket back to pending and remove the bump one and bump two tags to avoid the solve automation going off. Let's get started. Remember to pause the video as needed to follow along in your Zendesk account. Click on the product tray, the icon with four squares in the top right corner of the dashboard. All Zendesk products can be accessed via the product tray. Click on Admin Center, then navigate to Business Rules under Objects and Rules, then click on Automations. Click Add Automation. Now, I'll walk you through each step. First, give the automation a name. This is for internal use and should clearly indicate that it's the first reminder. Now, set the conditions that must be met for the automation to run. The ticket's status must be pending, since we are waiting for the customer to reply. The next condition specifies that the ticket must have been in pending status for at least 96 hours, or 4 days. You can adjust the time parameters as needed. We need to make sure that the first reminder does not get triggered multiple times. To do that, we'll add a tag to the ticket which we'll call bump1. This will help us track that we have sent the first reminder. We'll add that tag in a minute in the action section below. For now, we'll add a condition that checks that the bump1 tag is not present on the ticket. This will help us prevent sending redundant reminders for tickets that already have the bump1 tag. Now let's define the actions that will occur when these conditions are met. Let's scroll down to the section called Perform these actions. Let's send an email to the user indicating that you're still waiting for the response. In the email, we can personalize the message sent to your customer by adding placeholders. Placeholders are what you see in brackets. For example, in the email subject, we can include the ticket ID, and in the email body, we can reference the requester or customer name. You can click the View Available Placeholders link to see a complete list of options. Now, add another action that adds the bump one tag to the ticket. As you just saw, we included this as condition above to ensure this automation does not run again. Also, when we create our second automation, the one responsible for sending the second reminder. It will be triggered only if the bump1 tag is present. In other words, only tickets that have already received the first reminder and therefore have the bump1 tag will receive the second reminder. Click Create Automation to save your work. Let's assume the customer hasn't replied after six days. We'll now create another automation to follow up a second time. This second automation will have similar conditions, but with a few changes. The ticket status must have been pending for at least 144 hours, or 6 days, which is 2 days after the first bump. This time, we do want the bump1 tag to be present. As you remember, we added this tag in the first automation to help us track which bumps have been sent. In this case, we only want a second email to be sent if the first email has been sent. The bump2 tag must not be present, as that would indicate the second reminder has already been sent. We also want to ensure that the ticket's status hasn't been updated in the last 48 hours. Here's why. When you first set up this automation, you will likely have all tickets that have been pending for more than 6 days. We add this condition to the second automation to ensure that both reminders don't go out at the same time to those older tickets. The first bump will be seen as activity on the ticket so this condition will ensure that the first bump and second bump will be separated by at least 48 hours. Now, let's scroll down to the section labeled Perform these actions. When these conditions are met, 
another reminder email will be sent to the user. Similar to the first reminder we created, you can personalize the email to include the ticket ID and requester name, for example. And the bump to tag will be added to track the second follow-up. Now, let's take it one step further. If you still haven't heard back after seven days, it's time to solve the ticket. Create a new automation and follow the steps. The ticket status must still be pending. Update the time parameters to wait up to 168 hours or seven days of inactivity, which is one day after the second reminder. This time, you only need the bump to tag to be present because that indicates the second reminder has been sent. Make sure it's been more than 24 hours since the ticket was last updated in case there has been activity since the last bump, in which case you would not want to automatically solve the ticket. Now, define the actions by creating a message in the Perform These Actions section. Send a message letting the customer know the ticket will be solved, but invite them to reach out again anytime. Set the ticket status to solved. We could consider the process complete at this point, but what if the customer replies after the ticket has been solved? In that case, we need to create a trigger that removes the bump solve tags so the process can restart as usual. Navigate back to the Admin Center's business rules and select Triggers. Click on Create Trigger. Triggers are similar to automations, but they are not time-bound while automations are time-bound. Let's talk about these specific triggers conditions. When a customer replies, the status will be automatically changed to open, so we'll set the condition to look for a ticket status changed to open. The current user must be the end user, the customer who created the ticket. And the ticket must contain at least one of our bump tags, either bump one or bump two. This will allow the system to identify tickets that are in any phase of the bump bump solve process. Make sure to type in the tags names exactly as you did on the automations. For the triggers actions, simply indicate that the bump tags should be removed. This way, if the ticket goes inactive again, the automated follow-up process can start from scratch. To summarize, this is what the full process looks like. We start with a ticket that hasn't received a reply. An automation runs after a set period of time to send a reminder. If there's still no response, another reminder follows. After a few more days of inactivity, the ticket is solved and the customer is notified. Finally, if the customer replies after this, a trigger will clean the bump tag so the process can start over.